Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Zach Lee. The NBA has already made some changes this summer for next year. You know, they kind of changed the way end game situations are going to work, where they changed it down from three timeouts per team in the final two minutes to two timeouts per team in the final three minutes, reducing the overall number of possible timeouts in a game from 18 to 14. And then they also did stuff like moving the trade deadline to before the NBA All-Star game. And now said the hat time will last exactly 15 minutes from when the buzzer goes off at the end of the second quarter. They still claimed that it was 15 minutes before, but we all know that it was low key more like 25 to 30. So all that stuff is great and it should help the flow of the game a bunch. However, one thing the NBA really wanted to try and fix this summer was star players resting during the regular season. Players taking games off. We all know that some teams, <laughs> I'm not gonna say any names, resting their best players was a huge problem for the NBA last year. And now the NBA has finally announced some more changes in which they hope will help, they pray will help, reduce the number of times that some of these teams rest their players. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today, all right? There are six major bullet points that I have to cover. And I'm not gonna lie, the first time I read some of them, they didn't make much sense than when the way they were worded, you know, they were worded kind of unnecessarily more complicated than they need to be. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to read you what they said and then break it down in ways that basically everybody should be able to understand what they were trying to say. Lego! Official text. Eliminating stretches of four games in five days and 18 games in 30 days. Understandable text exact same thing like if you don't understand what that means i don't even know what to say to you even i got that one so right off the bat i'm not even gonna hold you guys up this is probably the most important and the biggest change that the nba announced four games and five nights were a serious pain for nba teams last year especially if some of those games were on the road too just imagine this you start off playing a game at home all right over the night after that you have to travel to a whole nother state to play a different game so that's a back-to-back -back right there then you have a day off before you have to travel on the road to play another game and then after that you're either going home or playing on the road to play in a game of the game after that therefore four games and five nights two three maybe even four different cities i'd imagine that had to be very taxing on nba players to do even us fans we could tell that they were tired at the end of those games you got down to the fourth game in the second half of that fourth game and you could just see it on the players faces they no longer cared about that game all they wanted to do was go home and get some rest. So doing away completely with that nonsense is a great thing. And of course, 18 games in 30 nights is gone as well. And basically what that is, is just an extended version of the four games in five nights. Now the most games teams will have to play in a month is 17. Official text, reduction of the number of back-to-back -back games to 14.9 per team, down from 16.3 per team in all 40 back-to-backs have been eliminated from last season. What they are trying to say, there won't be as many back-to-back. -back. This is something the NBA has been doing for a couple of years now. Last year, there were fewer back-to-backs than there were the year before that. You no, know, last year, like they said, there were 16.3. However, in the 2015 season, there were 17.8 back-to-back games. Keep in mind that this is just an average. This doesn't mean that's what each team will play. For example, you take a look at last year, the Oklahoma City Thunder only had 13 back-to-back -back games, the fewest in the NBA. However, most teams had 16, 17, or 18. In the Atlanta Hawks case, they had the most in the NBA at 19 back-to-back -back games. That was two games above average. So this whole average thing doesn't mean what you might think it will mean. And I wish they could find a way to make it more even because even this year, you're gonna see a couple of teams only have 10 or 11 back-to-backs while there is still some other team with 17 back-to-backs. Official text. Reduction of five games in seven nights, just 40 instances across 1.3 per team. Down from last year, when it was scheduled 90 times, three per team. What they actually mean, ain't as many five games in seven nights as there used to be. Kinda similar to the last one, except instead of four games in five nights, you got five games in seven nights. Take the four games in five nights, add a day of rest, and then that team has to play one more game. See, most of the times after a team would have to play the four games in five nights, there would be a period of rest for that team where they get at least two or three nights off. However, sometimes like this, there would be that fifth game on the seventh night and they're reducing the number of times that that 
that happens. And that means instead of playing two games, having a day off, playing two more games, having a day off, playing one game, it'll be something like playing two games, having a day off, playing one game, having a day off, playing two games. Official text. Production of single game road trips by 17%. Layman's terms, this is irrelevant. Why couldn't y'all just give us an actual number of the average amount of times teams would have these one day road trip games? Why'd they have to say 17% like we're supposed to know the exact number of times this happens so we can just take 17% away from that? So let me search this up real quick. Guys, so I just searched goggle and goggle didn't even know the exact answer to my question So I don't know what to tell you guys if goggle don't know don't nobody know edit uh, So I stopped being lazy and did some counting of my own for my Detroit Pistons to see how many times this happened to them Where they would have an away game and then come right back home the next game and it turned out to be only seven times last year so let's say the average team does this seven to ten times per year and the nba said they reduced that by 17 percent so what that means is one less time per year this will happen one less time like i said they could have just changed this text to this is completely irrelevant official text reduction in single game road trips over 2,000 miles by 67 percent there are only 11 of them on the schedule. Urban Dictionary Translation. You're right, the last point was irrelevant, but at least teams ain't gotta travel as far now. All this means is that when you have those random one game road trips, where you play at home, go to a road game, then come back home, you won't have to travel as far, and the team you play will most likely be in your own conference. So basically the closest thing to a home game you can get travel distance wide. Official text, increase in weekend games from 549 to 568. Translated text, give us your money right now. They said the reason they avoided doing this before was to try and avoid conflicts during the NFL season. You know, NFL games take place on the weekend, so they wanted to have as few of NBA games on the weekend as possible to, so people wouldn't have to decide between which sport to watch. However, now they're just saying, screw it, you guys are gonna have to pick NBA or NFL. And I think the real reason they did this wasn't to compete with NFL, but to try and drive ticket sales for the actual games themselves. Since people are more likely to go to games on the weekend instead of the weekdays. I mean, just think about it. People have work during the weekdays, so they might not want to be out as late at these games. However, on the weekends, they ain't got nothing to do the next day, so they'll have a night out and go to a game. Therefore, this will probably spike ticket sales up a bit on the weekend. That doesn't really help with the whole resting situation but i guess i just had to throw that in there but that's it those are the six major changes being made to the nba schedule this upcoming season and to be honest they said these changes were to help reduce the amount of times that players would rest during the regular season that players would take games off but i don't even think it's going to work the nba did something similar to this last year last year they reduced the number of overall four games and five nights down to one per team at least and then like i said there were less back-to-backs last year than the year before that but still you saw teams resting players even more so than they had been doing in previous years so i don't see these changes necessarily affecting that at all but i guess if you think about it this will help out teams that can't afford to rest their players by making their schedules a little easier so players can get more rest during the actual schedule time where they're supposed to play unlike these other teams who are still going to be calling off players to give themselves still an advantage over the other teams when it comes to the playoffs but that's going to lead us to the question of the day do you guys think that this will help out with players resting do you think there will be less of players resting this year because of these changes let me know what you think down in the comment section below but now let's take a look at what you guys said in yesterday's video and yesterday i talked about players that i think could surprise you guys by winning mvp next year and i asked you guys what players you think could shock the NBA by winning MVP, and here's what you said. You forgot about DeMar DeRozan. He can easily average 30, and the Raptors could get a top two seed in the NBA, maybe number one seed if LeBron gets hurt and Gordon Hayward doesn't work out for the Boston Celtics. Question of the day, I think two players that could surprise us are Devin Booker and Damian Lillard. Neither of them are given the credit they deserve. Booker absolutely went off at the end of last year i want to be surprised if the suns made the playoffs as for lillard we've seen him been doubted even as a kid and that has fueled him 
him not making the all-star team last year is going to fuel him to be even better than he's ever been. Devin Booker, this man said Devin Booker. Look, I love Booker and he's going to be a great player in this league for a very long time. But if you think he's going to win MVP next year, you are a different level of optimistic. And DeRozan is possible too. I can for sure see him averaging 30 points per game and the Raptors getting the second seed isn't out of the realm of possibility. I would say Devin Booker has a better chance of winning MVP than banking on LeBron James to get injured. This man has proven that he is nearly indestructible as long as he doesn't get those cramps. But I'm sure someone will come along and challenge either Kawhi Leonard or James Harden. Those are the two players I think have the best chance of winning MVP right now for MVP next year. Like always though, don't forget to leave your answer for today's question of the day down in the comment section below. But other than that, thank you once again for watching the video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more daily NBA videos. Until tomorrow, keep getting the bucks, Team SEC, and I'm out of here. Peace!